everyone. My name is Katie. I am a youth librarian at the Granville branch of Kent District Library, and I am so excited to be here to share some of my favorite new books with you today. I am going to talk about some of our brand new early reader books and also some of our brand new beginning chapter books, which you will find at your local KDL branch in the JE section of the library. And these are books for readers who maybe are just getting started at reading or readers who are excited to start chapter books but still want some illustrations. Even though I'm saying that, these are books that everyone will enjoy. I think they are really, really fun, different reads. And I encourage anyone that's watching this video who hears about a book that just sounds really cool to try them out because I think books are for everybody and can be enjoyed by everybody. Um, so I'm going to go in order in this video kind of of how complicated the words and sentences are in these stories to kind of help parents out if you're trying to find books for your um for your newer readers or for readers who might need a little bit of help with the words. Um, so I'll give you some ideas on um, how complicated the, the text might be. So my very first book that I'm going to talk about is part of the Shark Chums series. And this story is called Can Clam Go? This is written by Adam Lerhopt and the pictures are by Pauline Gregory. And I just love these illustrations. Look at those big eyed sea creatures, aren't they fun? Uh, so this book has very simple rhyming text and the whimsical illustrations like I was talking about. And the story is that Clam wants to go on adventures, but Clam has never left the hill that they live on. And so Clam is hanging out watching all these other sea creatures have adventures and travel all over the place and sees Shark swimming toward them. And Clam gets very, very nervous because Shark is very, very big. And what is Shark going to do? And you have to read the book to find out. But I will tell you that Shark is very friendly. It's nothing scary at all. And actually, Shark might help Clam have some of the adventures that Clam has always wanted to have. So that is Can Clam Go? And it's by Adam Lerhopt. And I just, I loved it. I love the pictures so much. My next book is part of the Highlights Puzzle Readers series, which I know we've talked about a couple other um, books in this series during our book talk videos before. Um, this story is called Pup is Lost. It's written by Jody Jensen Schaefer, and the pictures are by Claire Rossiter, Ross, Rossiter sorry, um, by Claire Rossiter. And this features characters um, from Bear and Friends. So there are other stories in this highlight series with these characters. And the idea is that Fox is trying to find their friend Pup, and Pup is hiding in a lot of the illustrations in this book. And the other thing that is hiding in a lot of pictures throughout this book is the letter P. And I'll tell you, the letter P is hiding on this front cover also. So I'll give you a second. I wonder if you can see it. Oh, I can see it. Can you see it? If you don't see it yet, you'll have to check this book out and see if you can find it when you take it home. Um, so Fox is looking for the letter P and Pup throughout the book and has help from all of their woodland friends. Um, the text in this book is very simple and the illustrations are just really charming and fun. So that is Pup is Lost um, by Jody Jensen Schaefer. And again, I love that this is a seek and find game. So you get to read a fun story, you have things to look for, it's kind of a double bonus book because you get to do so many different things. My next book is part of the Elephant and Piggy Like Reading series. So you see Gerald and Piggy up here on the cover. Those are characters from Mo Willems books. And this story is written and illustrated by Jarrett and Jerome Pumphrey. So it's really cool. Mo Willems 
um, is using his characters, Elephant and Piggy, to highlight books by other creators. So this one is so fun because you have Elephant and Piggy at the beginning kind of introducing the book, which is called It's a Sign. And then Elephant and Piggy show up again at the end also. And they might have their friend Pigeon with them too. Um, so the story of It's a Sign um, is that one, two, cat, and four, who are these characters on the front here, are forming a club. But they kind of need to combine together all of their different talents to create their club. And they're going to make a sign for their club, which is part of why this is called It's a Sign. This is really a funny book. Um, I like that all of the characters speak using word bubbles. And the word bubbles that they use are colorful, and the colors match the fur of our characters, one, two, cat, and four. Um, I also really like the illustrations throughout this book are created using foam stamps. And you can kind of tell sometimes that Jarrett and Jerome Pumphrey used stamps to create these pictures. It's kind of like stamps that you might use at home. Um, so the pictures are really simple but very eye-catching and this is just a really funny fun story kind of like elephant and piggy books right um, so this one is it's a sign by Jarrett and Jerome Pumphrey and you get to see elephant and piggy a little bit in the story too which is great my next early reader is called Captain Cat Goes to Mars. Sorry about that reflection there. You're seeing a little bit of my computer screen. Um, Captain Cat Goes to Mars, written and illustrated by Emma Virgin. And Emma Virgin um, also wrote the Pig in a Wig series, which we have a lot of those books at um, KDL, and they're really fun too. And these, this book has some bigger words and longer sentences in it. So it might be a little bit more challenging. It's got some really cool space words in it. And it's about Captain Cat and her pilot, Matt, who go to Mars. And they meet some aliens. They have some trouble with their space shuttle. And so they need the aliens help to fix it. Um, and it's just a really fun space adventure. Um, so that is Captain Cat Goes to Mars, and I think there are going to be more stories about Captain Cat and her friend Matt also. Um, and this has some fun rhyming in it too. You can kind of tell with Captain Cat and, and Pilot Matt, huh? Um, so this was just a really fun one. My next book is um, called The Sunken Ship, and it's part of a new series called Mermaid Days. These are written by Kyle Lukoff, and the illustrations are by Kat Uno. And this is part of Scholastic's Acorn um, series of books, which are kind of cool. They're a little bit like um, graphic novels or comics, um, with really bright, colorful illustrations throughout the books. All kinds of different stories are in the Acorn um, group of books. Um, so this is all about sea people. So I'm saying sea people because one of our main characters is Vera. Vera is right here and she's a mermaid. And Vera makes a new friend, Beaker. And Beaker is a octo kid. Um, they have octopus arms um, instead of a tail like a mermaid. And um, the sea people have all kinds of adventures in this story. Actually, I should say sea kids. They're all kids. Um, so you've got um, an octopus person, you have a mermaid, you have a cuttlefish person, all kinds of different combinations. Um, and they have all kinds of adventures. Like at one point, Beaker loses a pearl in the bottom of this ship that is wrecked in the ocean. And Beaker is trying to use their um, arms to get the pearl. But you learn something about octopi in this book. Octopi's arms, scientists think, can all work independently of each other. It's almost like they have their own brain inside each arm. 
And so Beaker has a really hard time trying to get this pearl because their arms all won't listen to each other. They kind of won't work together. Um, I really loved this book. You've got um, a very diverse group of sea people throughout the book with different skin tones. The word bubbles throughout the book, kind of like in um, It's a Sign. The word bubbles in this book um, are colorful and they match the tails or the legs of the character. So um, Beaker has word bubbles that are orange, Vera has word bubbles that are purple, um, which makes it easier to follow the dialogue. You've got short little chapters, um, but again, this is a um, early reader book. Um, so the text isn't, isn't too hard, um, but we're getting closer to those um, beginning chapter book uh, stories. So this felt like a comic book. It is the first book in a series, and I just, I thought it was really fun and, and unique to have all of these different sea kids um, living together and having adventures. So that is The Sunken Ship, uh, which is the first book in the Mermaid Days series by Kyle Lukoff. My next story is called Can Pup Find the Pups? And this is written and illustrated by Vincent X. Kirsch. It's part of Holiday House's I Like to Read series. Um, and the main character is Tate. And Tate goes to a museum with his friend Pup. And Tate and Pup meet all of these tiny pups or puppies at the museum. But then the puppies hide. So this is another really fun seek and find book. On every page you have different things to find. I loved that the illustrations, some of them are in color, some of them are in black and white, kind of almost like Tate has drawn the illustrations. Um, the text is very approachable and simple. Um, and I love the illustrations. So Vincent X. Kirsch uses black gesso, ink, graphite, colored pencil, and watercolors to create these illustrations. So they are just beautiful and really kind of unique for an early reader to have such complicated illustrations that are just awesome. Um, there also is a website through Holiday House that has more activities that tie into this book. So if you check it out and enjoy it, check, have your grown-up take you to the website and you can find more activities. So I thought this was really fun. It's kind of a activity book because you get to seek and find, but it also has a story to it too. Um, so that is Can Pup Find the Pups by Vincent X. Kirsch. And there also is another story with Tate in it called Can You Find Pup? And um, that story is all about finding this bigger pup throughout the book. Very, very fun. All right, my last ER book, my last early reader book, um, is definitely more complex with paragraphs and sentences and the concepts too. Um, so this is called Gigi, and um, I'm going to try really hard to pronounce this right. Uh, Gigi and Ah uh, Gigi. Um, by Melissa I.Y. And this is about Gigi. Gigi is six and she is biracial. And um, she is so excited because her grandfather, Ah Gigi, is going to visit from Japan. And Gigi has never met Ah Gigi before, her grandpa. And they are going to the airport and Gigi is so excited because she's going to have her grandpa take their dog for walks with her and she has a gift for him and she's so excited to meet Ah Gigi. Well they get to the airport and Gigi is very surprised because Ah Gigi bows to her but he doesn't he doesn't hug her. And then she gives him her gift and Ah Gigi doesn't open it. He takes it and he smiles at her but he doesn't open it. And Gigi is really confused. Does her grandfather not like her? Why, why isn't he talking to her or giving her hugs? 
So Gigi's mom has to explain to her that there are a lot of cultural and linguistic differences between America and Japan, and that some of the things that Gigi is used to, like hugs and opening a gift in front of people, are not very common in Japan. And so Gigi learns about Ajiji and um, some of the ways that um, his culture in Japan is different than her own experiences. And she finds some new ways to connect with him by the end of the book. So I just loved that this gets at, um, it gets at diversity, it gets at cultural and language differences. Um, I thought that Gigi was a very believable six-year-old while she's trying to navigate these new experiences with her uh, Gigi visiting from Japan. You learn about Japanese culture, um, and I just really enjoyed it. Um, so that is Gigi and Ah Gigi by Melissa I.Y. And I'm hoping it's the first book in a series. I don't know yet if there are going to be more. Um, but I really loved this one. I'd love to see more of Gigi and Ah Gigi's um, experiences together. So moving now into beginning chapter books. Uh, the very first one that I have is called Hide and Go Beak by Nancy Krellick with illustrations by Charlie Adler. And this is the first book in a very fun series about a bunch of chicks and their adventures. Um, so the very, this story is about Chirpy, who's right here, and Chirpy loves math, she loves science, she loves learning, and so she is really jealous because she finds out that the human children that live in the house near her chicken coop get to go to school, and they get to learn all kinds of cool stuff. So one day, she sneaks out of the chicken coop and sneaks onto the school bus, and goes to school and she has to hide out kind of because she knows she's probably not supposed to be there but she really wants to learn and the day that she's at school the kids are learning about simple machines which maybe you've learned about at school if not you're gonna learn a lot about them in this book simple machines like pulleys and levers and she also learns about skip counting so instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, you might count two, four, six, eight. Um, and so she learns about that at school too. And those things that she learns are really helpful to her when she gets back to the chicken coop because she finds out that one of her brothers also escaped the coop and he's getting chased around the field by a fox. And so Chirpy and her family have to outsmart the fox and they end up using what she learned at school. So they use some simple machines and they also use some skip counting and it's really, really fun. And at the end of the book, there is an experiment that you can try with simple machines too. Um, so I just love this. It's the first book in a new series. Um, the series is gonna be called The Great Math Chicken, which I think is so fun. And this book is called Hide and Go Beak by Nancy Krellick. All right, who likes silly books? I'm gonna be honest, I love silly books. I think they are just great. If you like silly books too, this is the first book in an extremely silly series called Total Mayhem. And this first book in the series is called Monday Into the Cave of Thieves. Um, this is written and illustrated by Ralph Lazar. And this is so ridiculous, friends. It's so ridiculous. So our main character is Dash Can Do. He's up here. And it's Monday and Dash is getting breakfast ready. And he's attacked by a bunch of scallywags. Those are these guys here. And a devil cat. This guy here. And Dash has to fend them off while he's trying to eat breakfast and get ready for school. So then Dash goes to school, and Dash's school is, a, is kind of a different school. He gets to learn things like paper airplanes is one of his classes, and vegetables class is another one of his classes. Like I said, this is very silly. Um, Dash finds out that some objects, some things at his school have gotten stolen, 
and he decides that this must be related to the scallywags and the devil cat that attacked him earlier in the day. Now, Dash has all of these cool gadgets and things he can use. So he has tunnels all over the school. He has a freeze ray where he can freeze his whole class so that he can go and investigate. Um, and he's trying to figure out what has happened to all of these missing objects and why they're getting stolen. Um, this is an incredibly silly and wacky story. It reminded me a lot of the tree, the Treehouse series, if you've ever read any of those. Um, and it just, it is, it is so silly. Um, so there are um, black and white illustrations throughout the book. Um, it is the first book in a series. So there's going to be a book, I think, for every day of the week um, about Dash's adventures. Uh, so that is Monday into the Cave of Thieves by Ralph Lazar. It was a very funny, quick read. My next book is called Esme's Birthday Conga Line. Look at those pictures. Isn't that a great cover? I love it so much. Um, so this is written by Lourdes Hoyer. And the illustrations are by Marissa Valdez. And it's about Esme. Esme has just recently started living with her grandparents, who she calls Mimi and Pipo. And um, Mimi and Pipo are throwing Esme a wonderful birthday. They got her a gift. They've wished her happy birthday. But they forgot to plan a party. And Esme is really sad about this, but she decides that she is going to throw her own birthday party and plan the whole thing. So what she does is she travels all over her apartment building and she finds people who will help her do different parts of the party. So she has some kids help her make um, pinatas and these are really cool pinatas. They're called pull string pinatas. So instead of hitting the pinata with a bat like we might do, um, in this book, um, it's a pull string pinata. So everyone at the party gets a string and they all pull at the same time and the pinata explodes and shoots glitter and prizes everywhere, which is really fun and cool. Um, she has some other neighbors who help her make a cake. Um, she visits um, a nice couple with her brand new guitar and she plays the guitar and is like, I'm gonna play at my party. And it's really funny because the nice couple's like, maybe we will play at your party because you're still learning. Um, because when you're learning, you're, you might not be very good at first. Um, and so Esme's still learning the guitar. Um, so I love Esme. She's very strong-willed. She's determined to make her party happen. Sometimes she kind of convinces people to help her. Um, I, I loved her. I thought she was really charming and funny and fun. Um, the book is full of full color, all color illustrations. Um, the apartment building is, is a very diverse apartment building of people who just want to help Esme have a great birthday, which I loved. Um, and my other favorite part is that the superintendent of the building, Manny, so a superintendent's kind of like a person at your apartment building who makes sure everything's working okay. He might help clean things up. He might help you if you get locked out. He kind of is around to help everyone in the building. Well, Manny, the superintendent, does not want to come to Esme's party. He doesn't like cake. He doesn't like messes. He doesn't like glitter. But Esme invites him anyway. And you have to read the story to find out if Manny comes and if Manny does come to the party, does Manny have fun at the party? Um, I love this book. I'm hoping there's going to be more because I think Esme is a really, really fun character. Um, so that is Esme's Birthday Conga Line by Lourdes um, Hoyer and Marissa Valdez. My next story is actually the second book in the Jojo McCombs series. Um, this one is called Fancy Pants, and it's written by Don Quigley and illustrated by Tara Audie Burt. And um, I will say I have read the first Jojo McCombs book. I think you could read this one without having read the first one and you would be okay. Um, so Jojo is a first grader and she lives on an Ojibwe reservation. 
And she is really excited because she is going to a fancy wedding in Wisconsin with her mama and her grandma, who she calls Kakun. And Jojo is so excited, but she doesn't know how to be fancy. And she knows this wedding is going to be really fancy. So she travels around the reservation and she watches kids at school and she learns some things about how to be fancy. Um, but she also learns that maybe what you wear or how you do things isn't that important. Maybe it's how you are on the inside that's really important. So I liked those messages too. Um, there are some illustrations in this book, not on every page. Um, they're black and white illustrations. Um, you do get a character list at the beginning with little pictures of everyone, so you can kind of get familiar with who everyone is in the story. And there is a glossary um, at the back of the book of Ojibwe and Mishef words also. Um, so this is a great, um, it's got great representation. I think Jojo is hilarious. Um, she very much loves her cat, Mimi. Um, and Jojo reminds me a lot of Ramona Quinby, if you've read any Ramona Quinby books. Um, so I just love this. So that is Jojo McCoon's Fancy Pants um, by Don Quigley. My next book is called um, Badir and the Beaver. And I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I tried to look up how to say Badir online and I could not find a pronunciation guide um, to help me. Uh, this is written by Shannon Stewart and the illustrations are by Sabrina Gendron. And this has some black and white illustrations throughout the book. Um, our main character is Badir, and he spends a lot of time hanging out with his older brother up here, um, Anis. Anis. Um, and Badir and Anis and their family have just moved to Canada from Tunisia. And um, they are Muslim. They're actually celebrating the, um, the month of Ramadan throughout the book. Um, and you learn a bit about their Muslim culture and the fasting that they do during Ramadan. And so Badira and Anis are at the park. Um, they're trying to keep themselves busy so they don't think about the fact that they're fasting. And while they're at the park, Badir sees something that he thinks is a giant rat. And Badir doesn't think that's scary. Badir thinks it's really cool. But no one believes him. They don't believe he saw a giant rat because he's telling them it was this big and no one believes him. No one in his class believes him. His family is kind of acting like they don't believe him either. Well, Badir sees the creature again and a nice lady at the park tells him that what he's seen is not a rat, it is a beaver. And the beaver is the um, Canadian national symbol and Badir does all this research about beavers because he's so intrigued by this creature he's seeing. The beaver is building a dam in the river in the park and Badir wants to know all about it. Well, the next time Badir's at the park, he bumps into a man named Jeffrey and Jeffrey is really angry about the beaver because Jeffrey thinks the beaver is going to ruin the park. And so Jeffrey is having people sign a thing called a petition. He's having people sign this document saying that they don't want the beaver anymore. They want it removed. And Badir is really sad because he loves this beaver and he loves watching it and seeing how it's building its home. So Badir goes to school and he does all this research. He talks with his classmates and they brainstorm ways that they can protect the park but still let the beaver live in the park. I love this story. I love that it includes Ramadan. I love that you learn about um, Muslim culture and um, also about Tunisian culture. Um, I love that um, the beaver is featured and this has a lot about environmentalism and um, ways to protect nature. Um, and it's got a lot of ideas about brainstorming and working together as a group to solve a problem. Um, this other character up here is Rita, who is one of Badir and Anise's um, new neighbors, and she ends up helping them a lot with solving um, their problem with the beaver. Uh, so that's Badir and the Beaver. It's by Shannon Stewart. 
I'm really hoping this is the first book in a series because the writing is great, the story is great, and it features a group of people that I have never read a book about Tunisian Canadian characters before. I have read some stories about Muslim characters, but um, you learn a little bit about Tunisia and I thought that was really cool. Um, so hopefully there will be more in this series because I loved it. My next story, I'm almost done. My next story is called Zara's Rules for Record-Breaking Fun. And this is written by Hina Khan. And the pictures are by Wastana Hakal. And there are some black and white illustrations throughout the book. Um, and I love, I love this story. So the main character is Zara. She's 10 years old. And her brother is Zaid. He is seven. And they are Pakistani Americans. And they live in this really amazing neighborhood full of kids of all kinds of different ages and backgrounds. And the kids all play together. They play games all summer long. And they have some new neighbors. The new neighbors are Naomi and Michael, and they've just moved in. And Zara is a little bit nervous. Zara kind of thinks of herself as the queen of the neighborhood. And that's mostly because she helps to make sure that their games have rules that are fair and that everyone gets to participate. And you guys know sometimes when new people come in, things change. And that can be really exciting. For Zara, it makes her really nervous. And Naomi has all kinds of ideas about other ways to play. And so Zara gets even more nervous. Well, Zara's uncle, Jamal Mamu comes to visit and brings her a world record book. And Zara is really inspired because what if she can break a world record? Then maybe all of her neighborhood fr friends will see her as the queen of the neighborhood again and they'll stop paying so much attention to Naomi. So Zara tries to break all kinds of records. She tries to do the longest tap dance. She tries to make the biggest chalk drawing. She tries to hula hoop the longest. Um, a lot of these things do not work out very well for her. Like I can tell you when she tries to make the giant chalk drawing, it starts raining and her whole chalk drawing disappears, which is really sad. Um, so, but what this book really is about is Zara realizing that she doesn't maybe need to be the queen of the neighborhood. What she wants is to have friends, and Naomi is actually pretty cool and maybe has some good ideas. And Zara can still have good ideas too. Um, so I liked this book because you learn a lot about navigating new friendships and finding ways to compromise. But I also really like what Zara decides to do about the world record. Um, she decides that maybe there's a way that everyone in the neighborhood can make a world record um, or maybe a neighborhood record. Uh, you'll have to read the story to find out. Um, but I just, I loved this book. Um, Hina Khan writes about in her author's note that she was inspired by Ramona Quimby. Um, so this is another one that reminds me of um, Beverly Cleary. And um, it's just, it's so great. Um, so that is Zara's Rules for Record-Breaking Fun by Hina Khan. It's just such a fun summer story about a great neighborhood, and maybe it will remind you of your neighborhood. And my very last book is the silliest book I have. You can tell from the cover that it is so silly. Um, this is for fans of The Bad Guys or Dog Man or really any silly graphic novel. This is um, called The Inflatables in Bad Air Day, and it's written by Beth Garrett and Jess Hitchman, and the illustrations are by Chris Danger, which, which is just such a cool name. Um, so this is a graphic novel, um, but it's a beginning graphic novel. It's just a little bit shorter. And our main characters are all inflatable beach toys. And this book asks the question, what would inflatable beach toys do if they could come to life and have adventures? Well, our main characters are Flamingo, Cactus, Donut, Watermelon, and Lynn, who is a sarcastic raft toy. 
Lynn has been around the longest, and Lynn just is not interested in any adventures or any of the silliness of any of her other inflatable friends. Well, all these characters live at a water park, and they are always looking for new adventures. Cactus finds out that the water park is getting a new wave pool. And Cactus is determined to find a way to go to the opening of the wave pool. So this is so silly. Cactus wants to see the new wave pool just because Cactus thinks it'll be cool. Flamingo wants to be famous. And so Flamingo wants to go to the opening of the wave pool to see if, if Flamingo can get on video. Um, and then Donut just wants to try all of the yummy new food by the wave pool. This is so wacky. So the inflatables can deflate and reinflate themselves. So the start of their adventure is that they deflate themselves. They get onto an ice cream cart that is going around the water park. And then they reinflate themselves and they can go to the wave pool. But all kinds of other crazy adventures happen throughout the story. This is so great. There are silly puns. There are funny characters. Um, I love a good water park. This is such a great summer book. Um, and I really, I think Lynn the raft toy is very, very funny because Lynn just is not interested in all of the silly things that the other characters want to do. But she ends up helping him anyway because she's also kind of bored. Um, so you've got to read this story. I don't want to spoil anything else because it is so fun and wacky and great. Um, so that's The Inflatables in Bad Air Day by Beth Garrett and Jess Hitchman um, with illustrations by Chris Danger. And it's the first book in a new graphic novel series. And gosh, it was so much fun. So if you like bad guys, if you like Dogman, you have to check this out. And that is it from me. Um, so again, I am attaching a list in the comment section of this video. Um, so if you heard about any of these books and you want to check them out, um, take a look at that link. That'll take you right to our website and you can place some holds on these great new books. Um, we are doing these videos um, every two weeks all summer and I'm sure we'll continue into the fall. So keep an eye out. We love sharing new books. And if none of these books that I talked about today sound cool to you, visit your local library. We would love to talk about books with you and your kids and find you your next great read. Um, hope you're enjoying your summer. I hope you take a look at some of these great new books. Um, and thank you for tuning in. See you again soon. Bye!